we are here for a very interesting live. I do well to jump in and you are free to ask your questions. I'm looking at my phone at the same time to see if I can catch any questions that may be coming. Today, without wasting too much time, I have someone here with me, David, Mr. David is here too. And we're going to have this talk about fun in Christian marriage. Can a Christian marriage be fun? Many yeah. times <laughs> we've had this question. So yeah, go for it. Introduce yourself. I guess this is our, this is our first um, time we've done this conversation we usually do this live together. Mm -hmm. I guess yes, you usually do it with Sister Debbie. So uh, I think I'm, I'm really um, looking forward to this one because fun in 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 relation christian relationship is quite um it is defined differently from couples couples right mm -hmm. uh, so I, i'm looking forward to talking about um this topic really <laughs> and uh, just for those of you that don't know me yet my name is david um so most of the time you don't get to see me because I'm, I'm part of the team in the background. So yeah. hopefully you're going to be seeing more of me. So let's stay tuned. Yes. Yeah, so good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you find yourself in the world. I'm so, 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 so happy to see you again. about can a Christian marriage be fun? Yeah, so when many of you are here because you're singles, because you're widowed, because you're searching, because you want to know if you can um, get married to a Christian man or Christian woman, you're trying to know how to go about getting married. That's why many of you guys are here on this group, right? I guess so. We are just going to talk about this topic quickly. Uh, it's a Saturday morning, my family is home, so you hear some noise or some of my <laughs> voices at the background don't be shocked don't be surprised so it's morning for them so they're trying to get their breakfast anyways can a christian marriage be fun can it be fun is it possible for christians to be fun um in marriage it's funny because some of my young friends or um, young adults here have once asked me and uh, they say are Christian men romantic? Are they interesting? I think. <laughs> well, it depends on what people um, qualify romantic as, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Some men can be very funny, like their demeanor or the way they behave with their partner. Sometimes it's like, I don't know. <laughs> They look romantic to the young person who has watched all the Bollywood, Nollywood, and all the woods out there. <laughs> you feel that um, the man should behave a certain way, um, or the woman should behave a certain way to show that they are romantic or they are in love with one another. Um, so, I don't know, do you have anything to say about this? <laughs> but can a Christian marriage be fun? Like, what, what, what makes even, what yeah. brings fun in a Christian, in a marriage? in general terms? Yes, um, for me, I believe that fun means different things for different people. Um, for some people, fun can be defined as uh, having uh, adventure, like going out, exploring, and finding new uh, memories they can create together. Uh, for some other people, it's just um, probably grabbing a cup of um, tea or, cup or a proper meal, like in a restaurant. For some other people, it's like maybe even having a night where you get to watch uh, movies together. And for some other ones, they want to meet with their friends. They want to like uh, interact. So fun to me, fun is not a um, objective uh, definition for everyone. It differs from people to people. But essentially, 
I think a Christian couple can definitely have fun. And another thing I want to talk about is that um, fun sometimes can be very different from the man and fun can be different from the woman um, point of view. So uh, I, I believe where a lot of couples are really lacking is when they don't understand what their partner is um, looking at fun, uh, the definition of fun for their partner. So it becomes um, kind of like the marriage at some point start becoming boring because they don't understand themselves in terms of that part of their marriage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, that's 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 a good point. And so I'm trying to look at if there's any comments. Um, looks like some people are trying to write. So if there's any questions that any any one of you guys have about this, feel free to 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 send in your your questions, your comments, your likes. Let's know that you can hear us and you can see us nicely. Um, well, from the point of view of someone who has been married for a couple of years, I think that um, over time, when you first got, get married, uh, there is this newness, like, you know how it's new, it's a new experience. Just like you're going to university or you're going to another class or you're going to another country. You are, you're, you're trying something new. So it's kind of new. And then you have this um, imagination of what, what you think, what your ideas of marriage is. So you're kind of excited. The both people are very, very excited and they're like looking forward to the new life, you know, as a couple and, you know, they're excited. Like they're just anticipating. They don't know what to expect, but they are anticipating. And of course, when you're caught in, there's this you know, love in the air and all of that. So when you get married, the first maybe few months and maybe one year or two years, you're still getting into the new routine of knowing each other and um, understanding your partner, you know, understanding the love life, the new love life. You know, marriage is I mean, it's, it's love, right? You no, know, love. You love this person, that's why you marry them. And so you're kind of, both of you are kind of like in love. <laughs> and it's fun. Everything that you do is just fun at that point in time. <laughs> the face of this man is fun to look at. The face of the woman is fun. Everything about her is just fun. It's fun. Your house is fun. The feeling of being married is fun. The intimacy is fun. The sex is fun. Everything is fun. Everything is just fun. Until you've gotten to know each other. <laughs> you started to see your weaknesses. <laughs> you started to step on each other's toes. <laughs> then the fun, I don't know if it's still like brand new fun, but the fun started to get punctures like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> and then you are you are like, I don't know what to, I don't know how to say it. Like you start having these up and down feelings. Sometimes you are excited. Sometimes you don't even understand your partner anymore. And if you're not careful, you don't know if you don't know if marriage is still fun. And of course, the responsibilities of married life comes in, and maybe you get pregnant, and uh, maybe your partner travels, and things start to happen. Life start to happen. Now it becomes a personal. It becomes a personal decision. Now it takes um, intentionality. You become intentional about keeping your marriage fun. Okay, I know any of many of you guys are not married yet. Some people are married on the group because they're mentors, and they understand what I mean by what I'm talking about. You have to live it to know it. I know people have many things in their head about marriage, but I'm talking to you from experience. Okay, so and of course, I have many friends that are married. We have a group of girls that are married, and we talk about it. <laughs> and I have male 
friends, like the husbands of my friends, will talk to me, I'm like, oh, you know, she doesn't like to neck me anymore. Unlike before, we will neck and kiss, and she always wants to be with me. Now she just like, you know, it's like I'm like in her face, or she wants to be alone with the girls, and she wants to like have her own time, you know. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's just the reality, right? So now you, you're trying to be, you have to be intentional about keeping the phone or bringing the phone into the marriage. And how do you do that? There are like very little things that you can do to, to make your marriage to remain fun, to continue to be fun. First, you have to find that enjoyment, you know, that thing that endures you to this person like some people find it in the little names that they call each other you know babe sweet love i don't know honey honey <laughs> my sweet tomato <laughs> oh, me. i have not really had a couple that calls each other sweet tomato after marriage forget it it's not what's oh tomato. really <laughs> yeah, more constant names <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, I've I've oh, had yeah. some couples, uh, man. If you see them, they're old, though. very old, though, but still, you think that they are sixteen. <laughs> yes, like, they'll be playing like uh, small picking. This one will tickle that one. And that one. <laughs> yeah, of course, and that's like, those like, are some wow. of the people. <laughs> yeah, but um, but unfortunately, a lot of a lot of marriages, um, a lot of couples, mm-hmm. they become. I think it's sometimes it's because of familiarity and they stop being creative. They stop um, trying to impress their partner. So yeah. that fun aspect starts going out. And um, But the thing is, um, if I, I realized that there are some couples, I was speaking to one couple, um, one uh, man yesterday, is, is a married man with three kids no four kids four kids and he was sharing with me like um how he used to do it to keep his family going and happy and everybody happy he used yeah he has a set date for him to go out with his wife romance (laughs) they go out leave the kids the elder kid take care of the kids Mm-hmm. And then he he goes out with her, like take her wherever she wants to go. They go yeah. have dinner. They go cinema. Just two of them, no kids, <laughs> you know. And um, also, he finds ways to involve the kids in their kind of like couples job, like you know. So even the kids, like they feel they feel like their parents are really. Um, in love in love together and um that is that is that is something that i think every christian couple can dedicate themselves into and this person i'm talking about is something somebody that is very is a, it's actually a pastor is <laughs> dedicated to um his work and he was even also sharing with me like some of the pressure he has um with his duty as a pastor and he was saying that um, he needs help because he doesn't want to lose his marriage <laughs> so you know that's how much he took the importance of being a married man and taking um, his wife seriously in that action you know so uh, yeah go ahead there is also another thing i think that one of the reasons why most people especially for those of us that are africans um is that think that christians cannot be romantic is because uh there is this common thing of people not showing showing their their love or showing their um their attraction towards to their spouse okay for example we have situations where a husband is is going um, is going they are going to church and the husband is not even careful as to um wait for his wife you know he's just go, walking ahead 
of the woman and she's running and rushing with the children and pushing the children and the man is just on his own you know and sometimes some of them think that maybe they think that is by doing that that makes them really men yeah and yeah. That, that's 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 really wrong and many of our brethren many of our brethren that are on this part of the world they have seen that they don't need to do that they don't, they're changing they see that they, they have to be they have to be they have to be inclusive in family life they have to be there for their wives they have to then you see couples on oh yes on this part of the world they sit to get church the brother is taking care of the children when they are making noise or trying to disturb or distract the man the husband is trying to is 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 inclusive in that you see men uh pushing the stroller or carrying their children on the on the what did they call it again i've forgotten um on the what what did they call it i forgot it. What, what do you call baby it baby carrier i think yes the baby carrier you know he's supportive and when the baby even before maybe during the the pregnancy he's he will go with his wife to antenatal he will um uh he will be uh, throughout the whole process he'll be there he will even be in the delivery hall so he knows what she goes through to give back to that baby unlike some other parts of the world where the husband is not permitted to see the rigor the woman went through to give back to that baby so he doesn't even appreciate what she has done he doesn't he doesn't understand he doesn't appreciate what but but they see it on this on some other parts of the world they see it as a collective thing mm-hmm. it's collective and then everyone is it's is put his hands in to do it and the issues of even cooking it's not it's, you hear it's 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 an aberration to hear that um, a man uh feels that i'm helping her to cook you're not helping it's your home so uh, you you should be able to it's something that you have, you have to do together because when you as a single as a single man you are cooking you are cooking for yourself why is it that as you as you get married you're not going to cook again and then it becomes rigorous and and because it's rigorous it becomes very difficult uh, the family life becomes very difficult and this issue of holding yeah these issues of holding holding your wife you know showing expression of love you are you are walking on the road you you are holding your wife eh sometimes you see them they're just walking as if they are ashamed of the woman maybe when she was when she was a spin star she was slimmer she was you know coquette as you would call it in french a little chic uh, coquette and you know yes. or maybe mm-hmm. she got married he, she got married she gave back to that baby she put on some weight she has some more stomach or some you know then you now you know don't want to be associated with her <laughs> you give that impression that should not be it's a, it's a whole package marriage is a whole package it's a whole package that woman is so, going to so, change so, i want to ask one question yes how 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 can how can our sisters spice up marriage how can they spice up marriage like sisters from the point of view of sisters how can they make it they should not of course you can't make it interesting you can you can keep dressing ways, practical ways yes of course you can keep dressing even as a, you can start you can keep dressing nicely mm-hmm. and as a, just like the singles dress why must you i don't think that because you oh, are now so that is a married <laughs> that is yes, a married people some, dressing yes some ladies think that that is a dress you should now begin to wear when you're a married woman mm-hmm. and that is a kind of dress you should not wear when you're not a married woman that you are trying to attract uh-huh. no you are not you are not you are, you are, you are not showing your body you're not going to show your body or your, your comes or what have you no but you should still appear smart smart and neat so you are say, you are saying our sister should, should should step up their fashion game right that when you when, when you give back to your baby you can look for there are a lot of things you can do you can wear gidul to gidul your stomach or stuff like that you know yeah yes and waist yes. trainer waist trainer yes it's a gidul you know something that will fatten yeah, your stomach so that your stomach <laughs> yes and then do some sports too you may do some sports it's not very easy it's difficult because i'm also a, i'm also a mother it's not very easy to always be careful about all of that 
and then another thing is that we fall into the trap of thinking that okay these guys they're not going to they're going to be unfaithful they're not going to look outside so you just yeah. think you can just do anything you like yeah you know? can, I, no, can, I, can I share some of the things that our brothers i'm just speaking generally from the point of view of what i've heard from uh, our brothers mm-hmm. i mean what they would expect their wife to do um, okay. to make things a bit fun um number one is uh a lot of our sisters i a lot of um them once they, they get married they they stop taking care of their hair you know they stop they stop um um kind of like cutting their nails looking all cleaned up you know and they forget that men regardless of whether they are they, they are your husband or not they are very visual you know so <laughs> if no no man wants to see his wife um looking um not on point you know so i i believe a lot of our brothers they will, they will love our sisters yeah but, but you know that there are you know? some brothers that do not even when the lady Take her, takes her time to make her hair. He doesn't it's even now. notice that she has made a new hair. When we get, when we get there, let's, hey. let's take one by one. <laughs> we we are going there. to touch some important issues. Yes. Don't worry, you can, you, can, good. you can shoot. You can shoot. We will shoot. We will <laughs> shoot. We will shoot today. But for now, we, we are talking about the sisters. What men are expecting from the sisters. So number one, okay. you need, you need to some of our sisters and they don't know these things you need to go and buy yourself some night gown eh? that when you're walking around the house your your husband can just you just be using the side eyes to be taking a look you know <laughs> <laughs> so, so so those are the things that spice up it makes it really fun and sometimes the, the your your husband is just sitting watching tv or whatever just come and sit down on him anyhow it's stopping him you know <laughs> that those you, you think you think that you think christian sisters don't do that do you think so no, no a lot of a lot of them don't do that they take their husband too serious like they cannot ah uh baba baba and uh, formula yo once I've given him his food like this, he's watching his TV, don't disturb him. <laughs> no. Well, that's, but, but. <laughs> that's based on relationship. I see. I think that's based on relationship. You know, all this, there is also a sort of brothers that want you to uh, relate with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daddy, wa. All regardless. Those you know? Regardless. <laughs> regardless. In the, in how, how do you, how do you, in, wait, how do you relate <laughs> with daddy, wa? Yes, sir. Baba. How do you now do those things with a baba? You can't now. No, 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 no. The new generation are they really into that baba thing? They are, they, there are they are some are. There are still some that are keeping to it. They think that there, if there you are don't some, say baba, but on, on the, yes, sir, on the behalf, just, on the behalf of those not, some, don't respect them. We, we, we want to apologize to our sisters on their behalf, but okay. Um, but you need to up the game. You need to up the game. Tell those brothers they should drop all this. Yes, sir, Baba. Yeah, ba me, she kneel down for me. If you don't kneel down for me, but sometimes not, you don't I know. Me. Sometimes it's, it's, it's not now. their fault. It's because I'm bringing. I will understand that. They are not. They are not aware of those things. I think we can do more with speaking to our brothers. To let them know about um, some of these things that they you know, do. and then these issues, you're, you're not even to, you don't touch up these things. You go, you you go out, or you go to work. You can't even send a, 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 a sweet text message to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I was going to so talk good. about that myself. Dry man, what is dry man? You can't send a sweet text message to your wife. Eh? No, to no, prepare no, this you know, woman. You know, eh? you know, roses, all these things. You bring one rose. Yeah? <laughs> or you just say today we're going to go on on uh, we're going to go to a restaurant to you know or you just you just call her and say my dear uh, come and let me um, as 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 i get to the house just get yourself ready and then you 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 come with, you go with her you just tell her i've been you you will escort her when she's doing those her shoppings to be window shopping you know sometime you know for all these economy sisters they will not want to buy the thing oh like that shit you have already you don't put it in your mind that she loves that that shit or that 
or that uh, skirt just okay next month that will be on my budget for to buy for her then you go ah, you know those kind of surprises women their mind will just they will just begin to imagine a lot of things they're highly imaginative beings and they will pay it pay, they will pay you back in in hundredfold because women are yeah. highly imaginative yeah yes if you do show this thing you don't tell her you you plan you know surprising things as you used to also do our own sometimes you might she's tired but she's just okay my husband likes amala ambegiri or what do they call all those food and she cooks some of those special things also you should look for some special things to do for or sometimes you just you know maybe even well, if I you have you, i tell you this i tell you this men 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 we, we ride on we ride on a, a on ego right if the woman knows how to praise her husband very well ah the guy he, he will go extra mile you know if you can tell him ah, my daddy wow my, my dear brother so nice. there are some <laughs> brothers that are like this so like this no whatever no whatever you no. do they don't they will not bring it out <laughs> they should learn yes <laughs> Uh, uh, but you know, you know, in that case, you need to start teaching them um, how to, you know, how to learn those things. Like, for example, a practical way to to help them to understand that you like those things. You show them some movies that show those things. My dear brother, wait, now, wait, you wait. Not practicing as a single. How do you do it when you're married? No, wait. You eh? still love. You right cannot right? even give a sister one. A, 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 a pencil. He's, he still he loves his wife. Buy a he pencil for his sister. But don't forget that in our church, we are not allowed to give sister gifts. No, 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 no. You don't. You must not have. You must. You are training yourself. You are going through training. <laughs> so you are. You mean that you can? You should be able to give a sister a gift yes, without strings attached. Without having anything in your mind. No feelings. You just you are giving. That generosity. You are training yourself. Yes. Okay. That's learn to be generous, to, to learn to give. If you cannot give, you cannot please. Women love people that give them. You have to learn to give. And the worst part of it is that maybe you are only interested in one, or the Lord has led you to one, but you have you have watered the ground around ten sisters. If you are, if you are, yes, that's the <laughs> fact about it. Let's say it the way it is. When she maybe she talks to one of her friends, ah, that brother says. It's a very nice. It's a, it's a good brother. Yeah. Ah, he will so take care nice. of his wife. But you, you are, you have, you are, you, you are in the level of sister. That sister, that brother, highly stingy. Who will marry him? Somebody, somebody is saying mostly the one that that are accountants. Christian and Kamem Young said mostly the accountants. Not <laughs> <laughs> no, I never give anything. So we're going to write, we're going to read some of the comments here. Yeah, there is someone here, his name is Victor Yogo. He was um he he, he said something that I really liked. And okay. um, I'm just going to say it. So he says that he believes that it is the best in the world, you know. The Christian marriage is the best in the world. So people should know that they should uh not justify their wrongs and say it's just life but as a christian truths and lies are different and can't commune with each other so maybe he's trying to say i don't know he, he, I, I i hope i understood what you wrote um, mr victor yogo so you are saying that the christian marriage is saying that the christian marriage is the best on earth but the yes. people should know that they should not try to justify their wrongs in the name of his life it's just life, you know. Uh, but and that truth and lies should be very, very um, distinct. They should know that you don't play with lies. And I don't want to digress, but I, I mean to. I want to also bring to mind. There was this discussion I was having with my friend, and there is this lady that um, that hurt herself, that committed suicide, right? Uh, so people are trying to find why, why, why did she commit a suicide? I mean, these are not Christians, but I think we can learn one or two things from it. Um, the reason why she committed suicide was because the husband had given her divorce papers. And why? Just because he married her in Africa. And that's, that's some of the problems of long-distance relationships. We're going to talk about that another day. We really need this kind of topics. They had this long-distance relationship. And maybe this guy didn't know this lady before or whatever it is. 
marriage. He got married to this girl like about seven years ago and brought her over to Canada, right? Um, but they were having difficulty having a child. Later on, this guy discovers that the girl had told him lies. Mm. She had been lying about him about her age. The age she gave to him is different from the age that she is. Okay. Now, he finds that seven years down the road, she's close to 50. Oh, wow. <laughs> apparently, seven years ago or 10 years ago when they were dating or when they were doing their distant relationship, she told him that she was, I guess, in her thirties. So she can't be in her 50s if she had told him she was in her 30s. And this guy needs a child. And she's not able to conceive. Okay, there are many factors to why a woman might not be able to give birth to children. Some young women might not be able to give birth to children. But when you are advanced in age, first of all, the man would think that that is one of the factors. Of course, when you have crossed 45 years old, this lady is already above 45 years old. And they've not even had a child. So he's saying, you know what? You need to go back to Africa to cure yourself. This is not working. Like, I need you out of my life. And, but she cannot conceive to the fact that this marriage broke up. And so rather than getting help and talking to people and trying to resolve the problems in her marriage or maybe move on with her life, she decided to take her life. Now, the lesson I'm trying to bring out from this is this point, this point where Mr. Victor Yogo said about truth and lies. Okay, some Christian ladies play these games of, it's not everything that you can tell the man. It's not everything that you can tell the man. And you want the marriage to be fun afterwards when he finds your dirty secrets, the skeleton in your cupboard. You cannot lie forever. You cannot keep these things. Even if some people will say, okay, I didn't tell him a lie. I just don't, I just didn't tell to tell him about it. If you didn't tell him about it and you think it's a very important factor that needs to be discussed and you didn't say anything about it and he finds out about it, the trust will be broken. It's going to be and that would destroy that would destroy romance. How do you now romance? Kind. How do you romance or how do you have a romantic relationship with someone that in your mind you consider as a liar or someone that you have in your you consider as a deceiver? Yeah, this, yeah it doesn't make any sense. It kind of just breaches that trust. Like the guy looks at you, and the fr- even as much as he's trying to work on that relationship, on that marriage, the first thing he thinks about is I want to love her, but why would she even lie to me? At least you would have just not told me the truth. Maybe I would have loved her like that. And maybe they would have, maybe this guy would have known that, okay, this girl that I'm marrying is maybe 42. We need an IVF. Like we really need an IVF like right now. Because if we're going to have children, we need to do it. We need, we, we can't just stay and be trying in the natural way because naturally her eggs are not as easy to conceive as the eggs of, a 33 year old 33 is even a little bit you know a 23 year old 25 year old okay so you cannot start your relationship on bad condition and expect romance to run through after the honeymoon period and the one year period and this man is discovering things about you that he didn't know that you weren't you weren't upfront about or vice versa you the man you think that the woman will keep loving you without apprehension if she finds things about you that you hid from her that is going to definitely dry out the truth is that and the truth is that for women women are very deep they are very deep yeah uh the the, the, a thing that might cause a break in the romance and in the relationship might even just be one thing you did on the day of the man on the wedding night Mm -hmm. I should hold on to for years and you will be shocked. You will not know. But you need to solve it. Solve that thing that was destroyed on your wedding night mm-hmm. for the romance mm-hmm. relationship to be. You don't joke with it. I was listening to to, to, to Pastor is it Kingsley and he was saying, he said that women, that sometimes when he went through some counseling, he got to realize that one of the problems of this marriage is something the man did the wedding night. Mm-hmm. She didn't forget it, and she kept, she keeps, um, adding them up. But men, they have forgotten it. They have, it is 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 disjointed in their minds, so they separate it. Oh, that that is already the, in the past. It's not in the past for a woman. Yeah, it's, it's not in the past for a woman. Mm. So that's where sometimes you see there is a lot of you. You see the marriage mm-hmm. when you see the couple 
you don't see this attraction so there, anymore. So is there a way to go beyond that? When it has happened, wow. There is a place of reconciliation. I call it the place of reconciliation. Like a week ago, we had this reconciliation day in Canada, right? Because of the 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 hurts that was done to the First Nations people, right? It hurts them for after many years, they still talk about it because of whatever it is that they've done to them, they, how they treated them as children, putting them in boarding school and everything. But Canada makes this reconciliation, the, the time of, they call it truth and reconciliation. So they even gave up as a public holiday to allow people to, you know, sit down and reflect on what happened in the past. So there should be a time of the couple, husband and wife sitting down together and reflecting on everything that happened, talk about it. Don't put it under the rug and say, you know what? I expect you to have forgotten it by now. After all this, but, life, after but all I've done for you. Yes, no. but even when you talk about it, make sure that you ask her, how do I redeem it? What will make you to forget it? You need to ask her. She needs to tell you what you can want. Can she do. really forget it? She can forget it. Oh, okay, but, but not forgetting, but maybe not forgetting, but what we make what you make peace the wrong, to come the, back to the right church. make him to right the wrong right yes what should i do to make you to make you to be at peace with to 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 to, to, to leave this to forget this thing it cannot also, be think, in his own way it, it also, must be in her own way okay also i think um marriage counseling can help because sometimes yeah. just the two people talking might not solve it allow them to see the other person's point of view yeah but if there is a middle person that is intermediating between two of them yeah then they will be able to hear themselves clearly and understand really the deep emotional trauma yeah that probably the, the woman has felt and the man is not even aware of he doesn't yeah. see sometimes men we don't even see how deeply hurting we are to um, our wives mm -hmm. because we are just, we are very logical, right? We don't think too much about emotions. <laughs> so, huh? well, uh, as women, as you rightly said, the woman can hold an emotion for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's one thing we can do to remedy that. Yeah. And um, I think we we need to also talk about some things um because somebody said in the comment that uh <laughs> we need to teach the men to have proper orientation on marriage mostly in the area of giving <laughs> giving maybe birthday going uh going out yeah and uh, all of that mm -hmm. um what i want to say to that is that um and i learned this they had one. Um, I understand that a lot of men we, we think we think ah once my partner loves me, she loves me now. But why do you need to do anything? She loves me. I'm providing for the house. So what, what is the big deal? If I don't love her, will I be doing all these things? <laughs> but but I understand that it's very important that um like sister Debbie pointed out you need to be spontaneous you need to be interesting you need to sometimes like she doesn't expect anything you just come with like flower oh my god she'll be like mm. she take pictures and everything mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and also um i realized that um just sometimes just take her out in nature and then you start blowing some grammar, you know. <laughs> you blow some some nice grammar. If you're on, you don't know how to blow grammar. You go and start learning how to and uh, the words of songs of Solomon, so that you can practice it and using it. <laughs> yes, you need to learn, learn to. Yes, songs of Solomon has some, you know, some. Yes, bars, it's deep. Some bars it's for deep. <laughs> romantic yeah. words. So, some mm. some romantic words for men, you know. Um, <laughs> things like that. Also, um, I, I realized that adventure as a couple yeah. opens up a new dimension to the marriage. Like when you go as a couple to a different environment, you realize that you start learning some new things about yourself. Yeah. Um, sure. You start seeing that, oh, 
I like this. I didn't realize that I like this, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, another thing you can do together is like uh, probably if you um, you are very active physically, you can start. You join a gym together, start working out together. Um, you see that it's more fun, you know. And um, for 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 some of our men that like cooking, or even if you don't like to cook, sometimes you can get some new recipe. Like go to a different ethnicity, not just your your um, your ethnic <laughs> uh, food. Try to maybe if you have everything on Af- YouTube. If you're African, try to do biryani from India. You know, um, that will help. Reason why is because it will help you to communicate. Like you will yab yourselves, and you will <laughs> you will play with each other. You know, like that. And that way, it spice up the relationship. The woman feels like you're spending more time with her, and you yourself you realize that oh, um, uh, the way she will start treating you is, is quite different. You know. Um, those type of things, it goes a very, very long way. And for people like myself, if, if you are the type of man like me that love music, we go to a musical concert, we shout, we jump, you know? <laughs> That's where <laughs> you spice up the relationship. And at the end of the day, you realize that all those hurts that she's having for that long time, she will start healing herself a little bit, you know, like, she start thinking differently about you, as a man, she be like, ah, my husband. She, you, you start seeing that maybe perhaps you start talking to her friends about it, like, oh, we went there, we went there, and um, sometimes you, you hear um, some of her friends saying, you're doing good with your wife, you're doing good. And another most important thing I see that helps um, as a man that you can do for your wife is sometimes. You don't even need to praise her looks at home. You wait until there's everybody's like, oh, my wife, oh, you're looking nice today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that, that little gesture will make all the other sisters very jealous, you know, like, and she will feel like, ooh, I'm the queen of the house, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> those type of little, little tricks. Yeah. It goes a very, very, very long way. You don't need to, and you know, it's very common with all these pastors. They do it a lot. You know, they say, ah, oh, my wife, mm, you're looking very nice. <laughs> in, the, in in between their messages, they do this type of tricks, you know. So, I mean, it's something that we, especially as Deeper Life brothers, we need to really, really learn. And there is nothing degrading about praising your wife publicly. Nothing degrading about it. It does not reduce your holiness. Preach it, brother. Righteousness. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It does not make you less of the head of the family. It's oh. that it shows how bold you are to express emotions in public. You know, and you are and teaching, you are modeling. When you do that, you are modeling to your child. You are modeling yeah. the right kind of marriage to your child. You are modeling to other young ones around you. They'll be watching. The young, other young men are watching. You are a model. Mm-hmm. You are teaching them how to treat their wives tomorrow. They want to be, they want to be better than you. True, true. You have to look back, look at your, your family, look at your, your parents. How did they do it? I must be better than my parents. Yeah. Then you, you also want to model. You want to be a model to others around you. That they model, they, they, they model that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those are very so, good points. Yeah. Very good talking point. Thank you very much for those. And somebody said, make your wife spe- feel special. You're not married yet. Keep this in your future box in your left hand you know your secret box when you get married you'll be able to bring out those things you know make your wife feel special and then i also see somebody um said that um before before i forget before i forget um i think there are some men that they don't know how to remember all these things i'm talking about Mm -hmm. the best thing for you to do is get a note 
start for me i use my iphone i just start writing some of the special things that your partner likes yeah start writing them down like maybe our favorite song favorite food a favorite place to be write it down because be, you, you know, have to be, yeah. be intentional be intentional, be intentional about it yeah so that you can you can engineer all these things i was talking about you know it's not natural for a man to do all these things it's not natural at all for a lot of so you need to learn to 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 plan it say maybe you can write down a list of places you want to take her to write it down and then every time you be keep it secret don't let her know about it we we'll be taking it off oh we've gone here we've gone here okay we've gone here we've done this we've done this before you know you have a list of 200 things and it you never run out of it so that's all i just wanted to say okay yeah so yeah those are good additions so i i i just noted that people should have to make a list of ideas like make it make a list of things that you want to do together you know traveling uh whatever it is just walking sometimes just taking a walk in the evening just that time alone away from the children just you and her sometimes when everybody has gone to bed watch a movie together me and my husband we do that thing a lot we love to watch a movie together like my husband will be like you know what there's a movie you need to watch i kind of saved it have not watched it so that we can have the fun together like it can be adventure it can be something epic it can be anything and we'll just with put popcorn. it on pardon me with popcorn you say with popcorn well sometimes with popcorn sometimes with wine sometimes we pop a wine in the night <laughs> when the kids have gone to bed we just pop it quietly you know and then he will like you want wine i'm like oh boy man you are you are doing the job you are not being no, the, the people the like the, the, <laughs> you are doing the job brother give me the wine i got the wine they will sit down then we relax and then we non alcoholic the <laughs> we took all the lights and then the tv will just be there like directly small cinema in our house we just <clears throat> watch the movie and then laugh about it sometimes we sleep off we don't even finish the movie and we wake up the next morning I'm like where, where, where did you stop did you did you do what that part and it's like oh oh i thought you were still awake like, oh no i slept on that couch now okay okay let's maybe we'll find time we have to finish that movie would come back they would rewind to where we stopped and then we watched it together you know and then some of the things that you can do together can i give one secret to brothers this is for free oh. this one is is for free okay um our young young especially our young young sisters these days they have watched too much of uh, netflix so they are very aware of things that is happening so i would just advise you just go and be learning how to do massage a little bit you know because <laughs> because hmm, my brother if you can massage your 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 wife feet oh <laughs> number one it helps for it helps for her blood flow you know yes. um, number two it it helps her maybe she's hard working she comes back from work it's very relaxing it's very relaxing not many men know how to do this thing so is very important one one you, you to, no to he, you are, you are right there is a lot to be learned and a lot of a lot of christian brothers have a lot to learn you know there have been so much of women meeting single all these things it's too much for women it's a lot now we need to concentrate on the men the men we need a special class special no, class maybe, maybe we should take start, them through the maybe, school maybe we should start take them through that school a, a men series how to treat mm your wife yes yes, yes. Have a podcast like that how to treat your wife and make her feel like a queen ah, mm-hmm. that's a very sweet one so that's that's one of the things that we do we we also um take walks you know sometimes we walk as a family and the kids are just in front and me and my husband at the back we just tickle each other we we tickle ourselves a lot and i'm like brother bro Pastor, you might be seeing it from the back. The thing that you are doing, you say, "Ah, you know my wife." Bite, bro. <laughs> you know my wife. You know. So we took each other. We do some things like you know, funny things, crazy things. Okay, that's our own stuff. You know, we're not going to talk about that on on mm. on a live stream. Okay, mm-hmm. have our own mm-hmm. secret mm-hmm. stuff. So you have to devise a method to make your fun, your marriage fun. Me and my husband sometimes we play like kids. Like the kids will be like, 
what is going on? What's that sound? Why am I hearing you guys? Is daddy misbehaving? You know, <laughs> like we're chasing each other and we're like running and running and they're like, what? They will run downstairs. I'm like, dad, what's going on? I'm like, he knows what he did. And we'll be chasing each other, like running and, you know, like, no, I have to do my own too. He did yours. I have to do my own too. And then we'll be giggling and laughing and, you know, and then we have some little, little names that the kids will be like, daddy, what's that name? What is that thing? What do you, what is that thing that you have been calling? He will say, ask your mommy. You call mommy. What is that? Mommy? Did I say it? Go and ask him, you know. So we have our own secret codes and, you know, kids are watching these things. You hear my kids say, oh, you know, I want to have um, a marriage like mommy and daddy's marriage where we can play mm. with each other, we can joke with wow, each other. Wow, wow. They're very young, but they are wow. watching these things. So the environment where your kids grow up matter a lot. It could affect it could affect how they relate in the future to their own partner i'm not saying that we're the best okay we are not perfect guys we are not perfect <laughs> marriage is a, is a relationship of two imperfect people coming together but no matter how much we we can have our misunderstandings but we have a way of mending our our misunderstandings and coming to we have a truth we always come to a truth okay we always come mm-hmm. to a truth and so we're just talking of some of the things that we can do to make uh, marriage fun. Another thing is physical contact. People, uh, some people, they just don't touch each other. I will tell you, when we first got married at the beginning of our marriage, we're trying to get to bed. We moved to Canada, right? So we moved from Europe and then we moved to Canada. So when we moved to Canada, we're trying to furnish our house. So we're trying to consider what kind of bed should we buy. So there's this couple, they're our family friends, we're very close to each other. We're, we're even neighbors right now. We're very close. Uh, so we're looking at the beds and we're like, oh, should we get a queen, a king? Or a double, you know. So if you understand, it's just like a, a king is a very big, huge bed that four people or five people can sleep on. It's really huge. A queen is a little bit smaller than a king mattress or a bed, and like four people or three people can sleep on it, but it will be tight. A double is just two people. It's really just two people, and then you have the full bed which is like the single bed for just one person okay so this couple said to us that no 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 no. you guys must not get a king no don't get the king so that when there is misunderstandings you guys body can touch in the night you know when you're sleeping and then you know it will resolve some misunderstandings no king no king for you guys right <laughs> we <coughs> We didn't get a double because it would be too small, right? We had we're going we have babies and you know, so we got a a queen, a queen bed, and trust me, you get to touch that. I'm just trying to say the physical contact that touch should be there, so that you're not just sleeping like very far from each other, and then you are so far and you're able to keep the rift apart for so 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 long. You know that physical contact, that physical touch. It's very important in keeping your marriage alive on fire every time. Okay, I know people are really trying to comment and write here. Uh, we're trying to read your your messages little by little as I go. And then, as uh, Sister Debbie already said, sweet sweet messages, send messages, send the sweet messages. You are the oh my God, my sweet um honey, my I don't know. I am Alachangwa honey in my comb you know mm. so somebody said my african queen my african king my sweet sweetness my any name just think of something mm. and Call you come something. back from work you all greet each other you, you yeah ah, greet yourself when you come back from work come to each other greet yourself greet yourself goodbye when you're going out to you know to work like give yourself a peck when you're going you see a lot among the caucasians like Especially the French. I'm telling you, Paris, oh, is, Paris oh, is a city of love, my 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 guys. When I first got to Paris, oh my god, I was so you know, coming from Africa, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> my god, these people did not stop kissing. Kissing is plenty. I was, you know, holy sister embarrassed on the train. I'm like, oh Lord, keep me, Lord. It was too much. They're always holding hands, kissing. Ah, you the, the sign of knowing that they cop a Two people are together. They hold hands like this. Yeah. Watching together. Yeah. You can see another thing people. also that Opa yeah, and Oma another, holding each other. Another, yeah, another thing also that also, you know, when I came, there was also a shock for me is that I noticed that the man 
we never walk without carrying the bag of the woman. Is the one is always carrying a bag. My mom noticed carrying that when she came. Carrying her things. Ah, that thing. I was so shocked people. about it. Yes, he carries a bag. They, they, if they are going anywhere, he's carrying a bag. You know. I was like, wow, this is sweet. You know, we're just giving you imaginations. What a want. Ah, no. Let, let me make you sweet. guys laugh. Let me make you laugh a little. When we went to Africa for my dad's funeral, we were in we were in Nigeria, right? So Unilag. So in Unilag, we went to this building and I was working at the back and my husband was working in front. So he's like, okay, we're just taking a walk. Of course, I was mourning. So I was really, he was trying to really raise my mood i was in it i was really messed up trust me guys i was messed up so he was trying to raise my mood and so he took me we were in unilag and so he took me to one building and he wanted to show me something so he walked into the building building ahead of me and guess what <laughs> the men were like oh god oh god oh god, oh god. Mr. 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 You're carrying a woman's bag. You're carrying a woman's bag. He told other people, he's carrying a woman's bag. He's carrying a woman's bag. <laughs> and then I was walking at the back and coming. <laughs> and then people were like, but the man is carrying a woman's bag. Look at him. He said, it's my wife's bag. Then the other woman said, ah, it's your wife's bag. Wow. Oh, God, you're the one carrying her bag. Ah, the man is just walking, <laughs> just following him at the back. The man is carrying her bag. Oh. They, they whisper to themselves, ah, this is cool. are they from here? Hi. <laughs> like from here. This is cool. Look at the man, he's just carrying her bag up and down. The woman is just walking. My guys, it, it was, <laughs> I can never forget that experience. It was for me. In the Nigerian setting, it's odd. Why is he carrying her bag? Wait, for what? Why would the man be carrying the children and the bag of the woman? Like, he just feels like it makes him less of a man to carry her back. No. And <laughs> that's one of well, the our young started. generation are not are not slacking in Nigeria. No. Uh, they are really up in the game. I'm I'm really proud of them. Really? Them. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't no, notice no. that. Right. You, see, that. you see men helping their wives more in Nigeria. It's Nigeria. our deeper life brothers. We see deeper what are talking about. Our our church we brethren, the Christian up. men. No, they are coming uh, up. Let's give it okay, to them. Ah, the young saying? generation. I mean, when I mean now. the young generation, I mean those guys that are getting married in 29. You know, this 1992 yeah. babies. 1992, yeah. 1993 babies. They are, but those 1980, 70, ah, they need to go. <laughs> guys, come off of this thing. They apologize on their behalf. They will catch 19, up. They will catch up. All the 1980s babies, wake up. I know you are almost 40, but oh, you are 40 and above. You know, so you know our generation then. Please, eh? My husband is in that generation of the 1970s, but still, my husband is still, you know, maybe because he lived abroad and his mind is, and that that's one, one of the things that really I liked about him, even before he proposed to me, I noticed that during programs, he was always carrying this baby, always. I thought it was his baby. When he proposed to me, I said, but what about that baby? That baby? He said, it's not my baby, you are just helping the woman. He, he just helped. The baby disturbed that's the mother, so I helped her. That's it. And I was also practicing. To and preparing for myself. Learning. Learning. So ah. it's it's it, it, those are some of the things, little little things that you do for a woman that it just endures her. You just and you just get endured to her. Like yeah, just feels my husband helps me. Oh, you know, he can help me with the baby when the baby is crying so much at church. The woman is not just all alone, juggling the baby, petting the baby hugging the baby and then she's all fagged out and she gets home and she has to start doing the kitchen, the cooking, the cleaning and bro, you take out your suit you relax, you expect her to hang it for you, you stretch your leg, start watching TV and start waiting. Is the food not ready? Is the food not ready? Is the food not ready? Don't you guys? Don't oh, you guys. Our, our own brethren, you know, in our own category that we shout, Mama in Kechi, come and carry your baby <laughs> your baby is making noise your baby has <laughs> done poo poo Hey, carry, carry. I remember those days as as a as a as a, as a youth. My uncle we we shout when he, when when the baby we he we shout. Come on, carry, carry, carry. Yes, yes. I was like ah. those kind of things. We should drop all those things. Drop all those things. Drop all those things. It doesn't yeah. make you a man. It doesn't make you a man. Drop it. Uh, I think, your baby, uh... your, your baby, your baby. Yes, you clean it. What are you shouting, Mama? In Kechi, Mama. So, so and so, no? Huh? And then there is no all this mama, mama in Kechi, baba in Kechi. What's that? Get a good name. A sweet name. Daddy. Yes. Sweet. No, not I that. Have a name. Babe. 
we should watch babe, that. Uh, how about babe? Yeah, babe is not bad. Some I've been hearing a lot of babe around. But some people don't like that babe. My husband said babe. Some don't like it. They don't, they don't like I, it. I just teased my husband one day and I was like, I think we should change that in our name. We should start calling you babe. He said, babe. Say it again. I said it started laughing. <laughs> okay, we don't call ourselves mama anything. We have our own little names, okay? But it's not that babe. Okay. You know, babe is good. I'm not saying babe is not good, guys. If you're calling yourself babe, it's a beautiful name. It's, it's awesome. your baby. So he, the man is the first baby of the wife. Anyways, as okay, the mad people understand this part. So he's your babe. He can be your babe. You know, you can call him babe, you can call him sweetheart, honey, um, tea. You can call him any name. Any also, I want, I, want, I want to point out. I want to point out. You know, we've been saying that brothers need to improve. Also, there's certain things that women need to improve on. We didn't fully talk about it today, but I just want to say one thing. Um just as much as men uh, are supposed to gift women, men also appreciate your wife just coming randomly, buying him one special gift, randomly. Yeah. So oh, it goes a very long way. Do you think do you think women don't do that? Uh not too no. many women do that. They always want they're always at the receiving end. No. They want him to give women them like to receive them. gifts. Take me here, take me there. <laughs> you know? If you go on TikTok now or Instagram, and you, say, you see men that you say, "Are we too? We like to, we like to take it out." <laughs> I beg, take us out too. <laughs> we are, we are, we are facing a lot of stress at work. We need to go out too. <laughs> so that's the new trend now. They want to be taken out. Of course, and it's, it's, it's okay, it's, it's, my dear Christian it's, sisters, please put in your budget to start taking these men out. No, no, no we have out. to be smart now. Why Let's be money taking from them out? Take them out. Take them out from here and in, in advance, and then plan to take them out. This money it doesn't matter. Out. We want on this on this deeper life Bible church singles. <laughs> we want to we want to build up independent, wealthy. Women that that are boxed up. Do you need you, you can you can have your money? You well, if you don't have your money, money, you can as well take your pocket money, take the money from the man and take him out, give him a trip. Of course, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. Why not? But you should you, we, we should also build them up to to understand they should also have the ass too. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Of course, yes, I'm very important. Yeah. So thank you so much for all those that are watching us. I can see lots of you. I can't mention all your name. Fiomo Junior Edward, Joshua Aigbo Karede, um, Catherine Ikudaisi, um, Shaki Mode. If Peter you are enjoying Mode, it, Christian send him your thumbs up. Yang, who has contributed a lot of comments here. I love your comments. You're very hilarious and interesting. I, so we see all your comments that you've written. Somebody wrote um, that uh, most certainly a christian marriage can be fun and more and joshua is writing many african men are empty of fun and romantic things to do to enliven their relationship and make the marriage repel boredom yeah that's a very interesting point and said speaking your spouse's love language makes a lot of difference in a relationship yeah so really thank you so much for those who said that they have learned something um and that i'm grateful for this live thank you for also joining um thanks to you also for coming to learn this lesson it's a learning uh, curve for every one of us we are all learning me i want to learn more ways to make my marriage fun i'm out mm. when i said it this year at the beginning of this year that i'm out to make a lot of fun this year 2022 is my fun year i want to travel and yes i traveled a little more i went to europe after what 10 years almost 10 years no eight years i went to europe i went to france it was fun i had maximum of fun i went to the mountains here also you know and let's see how next year is almost winter i don't think i want to travel again but next year maybe i'll go to asia maybe i'll go to united arab emirates maybe i'll go to um the us maybe i'll go i don't know but i want to go out life is short i want to enjoy my life and the kids were so happy to go on a vacation to Europe, they met their cousins, they went to the Eiffel Tower. It was fun. You know? <laughs> so find little things to do um to do in your life to add spice into your life. Even if you don't and have you money, you can you can you can you can go get around nice you, places to go to where you are yeah. go to nice places to go to resorts. Go to somewhere where you're just quiet, yes. where you can just relax, where you can just let the sun 
bathe you. Of course, me, I don't like too much of sunbathing because I think I'm tanned enough. But you can still go enjoy the, the view of the sea, uh, the lake, whatever it is. Have fun with your life, okay? Have fun with your life. And for you who are married, make your marriage fun, guys. Make your marriage fun. Put the spice in. Make this marriage sweet. Eh? Make Let us enjoy these homes. Let it be heaven on earth before we go to heaven. Let's enjoy these marriages. You are single. You are learning from us. We're telling you uh, uh, what, we're, what, what we do. And of course, one day we'll talk about some of the mistakes that we've done that, you know, in our marriages that we shouldn't have done, that maybe we should have done better. Yeah, so uh, there is always a place of learning. There's always a place for you to learn. So we're going to be having more, more and more speakers that will join us on these lives and i hope that you you enjoyed this live if you did please do well to like share the live to your friends remind yourself come on let's talk let's just let's expand our horizon let's you know get ready for marriage and learn a lot we want to learn because you want your marriage to be beautiful you want your marriage to be sweet you want you want your marriage to be interesting that's why we're here that's why we have this group really seriously we are here to tell ourselves the truth we're here to learn we're here to get better we are here to create sweet, sweet, sweet marriages. Different from the marriages that we know, better. We want to bet, we want to create a better marriage from the marriage that our parents had. Definitely. And also, if you like us to discuss a particular topic, mm-hmm. please drop it in the comments. Yeah. So that we can we can talk about it on the next one. And if you want to join, let us know. We'll, we'll send a link to you. you want to join as well. Here with us. It, the comments and let us know as well so that we can add you up also um we are going to be starting twitter space very mm. soon so we can have like people join in and talk as well some people you- um, are more on twitter so we want to also reach people out there to make this conversation going on on all of these platforms so if you enjoyed this session please um share it with somebody like comment um, and hopefully we can have more of these uh, interesting topics we have a lot lined up so hopefully we can get to all of them mm. uh, thank you very much i think we covered everything right yeah i think we can yes. cover everything another theme pray together one thing to make your marriage fun is to remember to pray together a, mar- a, a, a couple that prays together stays together. If you can pray together, you will be able to dislodge some of the things that you do not see. The devil fights marriages. He does not want marriages to stand. You'll see that people will fight. You'll be happy all of a sudden. You're fighting yourself. You're like, well, how did this fight start? We, we were just happy. What happened? You don't understand. The Bible says, says that the, the weapon of our weapons are not carnal. But they are mighty to, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we are not ignorant of this device of the devil. The devil fights marriages. I can tell you that. Hold your hands together. You want to pray naked? Hold yourself together naked. Pray together. You want to pray with kneeling down? Hold your hands. Pray together. Pray for your marriage. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Even your wife to be. You're not married yet. Start praying for your wife to be. Pray about everything. Childbirth. Pray that you will not lose your wife untimely. Pray that you, your wife will be a blessing to your life. Pray that your wife will be a favor to you. Just like the Bible says that whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Pray that your husband is going to be like a tree planted by the riverside. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your unborn children. Pray for your future together. Pray for your marriage. Very, very important. I didn't want to forget that part. So, Commitment to each other is very important. Be very committed to each other. Once you get married, your husband, your wife is your number one person. That's part of some of the, I, I, there was a video that aired on the group. There are lots of videos that we've had um, from the lives, previous lives. You can always go and watch them if you have missed any. Commitment is very, very important for a marriage to work. If your marriage is going to work, you cannot place your partner as a second class citizen in that home. They are number one for you very very important so that's all for me god bless you all for staying on here i'm so happy to see you i'm always happy to see all your faces and for those who don't know me my name is princess again that was sister debbie there and this is mr david David. (laughs) yeah so um 
Uh, I don't know. Do you have any other thing to add to this? No, thank you very much. It was a nice time talking today. Thank you. So yeah, I have my piano class starting very soon, so I have to jump out of here. Thank you very, very much, and see you. Thank you. Can. Give us an answer of peace, peace, joy. Yes. Bye. Bye. À la prochaine. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Ciao. See you guys. Ciao. Bye bye. See you around. <laughs>